I had originally planned on returning to our series, Signs of the Times, and jumping into chapter 9 of Revelation, but what do you know? Uh, The Lord laid something on my heart this week, and I'm not sure who needs to hear this message, but I am certain that I am supposed to give it. The title for the message this morning is The Principle of the Process. Look at your neighbor and say this, go from A to B, B. not A to Z. Now, if you're a human being in this room or watching online, this message applies to you. Who is not perfect? Come on. This applies to you. I was having a, someone's like, it's hard to raise my hand right now, but my wife, my my, my, my wife, my, 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 I'm good. I don't know. She gave me something serious. I'm telling you. It's crazy. I was having a conversation uh, with a good friend, a good friend this week, and he said something so simple yet so profound. He said this. He said, God really wants us. What he really wants for us is to go from A to B, not A to Z. And instantly, this message dropped into my heart, and I wanted to give it before I forget about it and put it on a list uh, for the future. And I want you to know that as I deliver this message, I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking to you and telling you that you need to apply this. I'm talking to myself, y'all. I need to hear this just as much as you do. I mean, you may think I'm perfect, but guess what? I am not. Amen, says my wife. <laughs> the principle of the process. Say that. The principle of the process. God wants us to go from A to B, not A to Z. And we just watched that video about Jim and Faith's recovery group. And then that's what it's all about, getting you to the next step. What does God want you to do right now? And I just highly encourage you uh, to to talk to Jim and Faith. Their, Their group is absolutely incredible. And as this church continues to grow, and as new people come in, it's always been our hearts that this would be a church that does not have it all together. I'm serious. Like, we got cool stuff, cool stage, cool equipment, all, but we, we do not want to be a church that looks perfect because we're not perfect. We don't want to present something false to people. Like, we're, we're real about this. We are not perfect. We do not have it all together, uh, and we want this church to be full of people that also are not perfect. Uh, if you're perfect, leave our church right now because you're going to mess it up. You're going to mess the whole thing up. <laughs> we want to create a culture where you are free to go from one step to the next with no pressure. This has plagued the church for a long time. We want you to feel free and to feel like, like you're not being judged for not doing it right. Has anybody been to a church? Don't, don't, don't say the church, by all means. <laughs> has anybody been to a church where you just felt judged? It's just like, I just don't, f- I feel like nobody even said hi to me. Like I walked in, nobody even said Hello. Uh, are, are you saying that happens here? Uh, I know you're not, Mom. I know you're not. But we want to cultivate a place where you can learn and grow, and here's the big part, make mistakes. Make mistakes while being surrounded by community. Uh, each one of us are unique. We don't all believe the same thing. Guys, I don't know if you knew this. There are people in this room that do not agree with me on certain things. Really? And that's okay. That's okay. Okay. There's people in this room, maybe the person sitting next to you, they might feel a little bit differently about some theological things in the scripture, but guess what? We put Jesus at the center and we say, hey, we'll, get, we'll worry about the rest when we get to heaven. Right now, I want to be a part of a move of God right here in Elkins. That's what makes us unique here. God wants us to go from A to B, not A to Z. And to better understand what I'm talking about, the story of Abraham is the perfect place to start. So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning, back to the book of Genesis, which means the beginning. If you have your Bible, go ahead and pull it out. Um, You can follow along in the Bible app as well, the YouVersion Bible app. It's like the only time you can be on your phone. If you're on Facebook and the ushers catch you, they will confiscate your phone. If you're on Instagram, tag me, follow me. Uh Uh-huh, funny, huh? All right, let's read this verse. Genesis 12, one through four. Now the Lord said to Abram, who would become Abraham shortly after this, Go, everybody say go. Go Go from your country and your family, okay, and your father's house to the land that I've already shown you. Go to the place that I am going to show you. And when you do that, like when you go, it is at that point that I will make you a great nation. 
I'll bless you and I'll make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. This is slam packed full of stuff, but this is, he's talking to what is going to become the nation of Israel, the God's people, the chosen people. Israel, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And that's why we always need to be praying for Israel. We always need to be keeping our eyes on Israel always need to be blessing Israel and not cursing them. That's one of the scary things. October 7th, something awful happened over there. And immediately, I mean immediately, you saw people that started cursing Israel. That's just not a place you want to be. I'm I'm just telling you. Anyway, all of the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abraham went as the Lord told him. God said go. What did Abraham do? He went. All right. This is the alphabet. Can you guys see this? Some of you can't. Hold on. Let me see if this... Does that help? How about this? I'm going to fall off the stage. Okay, this is the alphabet. Clearly, that's the alphabet. I did not write that, by the way. My wife did that. I meant to have you write something else. We'll get it for the 11 a.m. This represents the principle of the process. This represents the process. Everybody say process. process. Guess what? It's a process. It's a process. This represents the process that the Lord will use to get us from one degree of righteousness to another. And this um, big picture, um, long story short, this is called sanctification. Okay? Sanctification. And it's the process. Everybody say process. process. It's the process of continually obeying the Lord and trying to look more like Jesus and less like the world. That's it. It's that simple. Each letter here going from left to right, each letter uh, represents the next phase of your process, okay? A being the beginning, Z being the very end, Z being perfection. Who's Z in here? Ain't nobody got, I thought somebody would raise their hand, just be funny, right over here. Chad's a Z, we all knew it. Who's an A? Anybody got any A's? Like, I feel like an A. And you may feel like you're here this morning or watching online, and you may feel like you're killing it right now in life, and you're somewhere like over here. You're like, yeah, I'm doing really good. Or you may feel like you're an awful person, you're doing a terrible job at everything, uh, and you're right where you started, maybe even a little bit behind it, uh, you're stuck on A or, or before it, and it just seems like nothing is getting better. Anybody ever felt like that? Well, I know I sure have. I get up here every week, and I'm like, Lord, I'm over here. Like, I'm here. Regardless of where you may think you are, I just want you to know this process, everybody say process. Process. This process applies to all of us. If you're a follower of Christ, nobody gets a pass from the process. We are all somewhere in this process. Now, you can try to act like you're over here when really you're over here, Uh, You can think that you're over here, uh, but that's not real, and that's not authentic, and that has plagued the church for generations. Everyone say, it is a process. process. Your job, God said to Abraham, go. Your job is to do what? To go. But, but, But... this is the whole point of the message. It's not, maybe going doesn't mean what you think it meant. And I hope this releases somebody in here this morning. In the verse we just read, God tells Abraham to go, move from where you are, Abraham, okay? Move from where you are, don't stay there. And it's easy to read this scripture and miss what is actually happening. God is giving Abraham a starting point, okay? He says, Abraham, right now you're here. You're right here. I'm telling you to go. Now, did God tell Abraham, did God tell him to go and make a great name for himself? Did God tell him to go build a nation by himself? Did God tell Abraham to be a blessing to the world in his own power? All God said was, go. You're right here, Abraham. All I want you to do is go to right here. And if you'll do that, then I will. Who will do it? God will do it, not you. And this right here, where's this marker? I need to, I need to, this is going to be so much fun. This here, right here, is where every single believer in history has started. You may think you're a super saint and God's gift to Sunday mornings. But guess what? You started here and you may be closer to here than you think. 
Uh Uh-oh. A represents the beginning of the process. This is the moment that God says, Kevin, Ron, Jacob, Jennifer, Amber, go. And it's at that point that we have the choice to respond to that invitation, or we can reject the process and turn away from God. The better choice is to accept the process and walk towards God in this process called sanctification. Okay. So God invites Abraham on this journey, this process of becoming more like Christ, more like God, moving from point A to point B. Now, here's the cool part about this. Abraham does not know what's after B. It's as if the rest of this doesn't exist. God told Abraham what the final destination was going to look like. I'm going to bless you. You're going to have a great nation, so on and so forth. But he did not tell him how to get there. That's key to this. Abraham does not know what B looks like. He's just walking towards it. You see, if Abraham knew what all this looks like, who knows that's a little overwhelming if you're here? That's a lot. And if you could see down the corridors of time to what God was calling you to do and the purpose and the meaning of your life, you would sabotage it. You would live in fear of what's coming next. God doesn't want you to go from here to here. God wants you to go from point A to point B. That's what he was asking Abraham to do. And here's the thing you need to know. Abraham made tons of mistakes along the way. Abraham struggled with doubt. He struggled with fear. He lied about his wife. He slept with another woman. He laughed at God. He blamed God for not being able to have a son. Abraham uh, by no means was perfect. He was a hot mess. And he was a little rough around the edges. But God still loved him and called him a friend. That's what it means to walk this process out and to live by faith. God, I don't know what's next, and I'm definitely going to mess this up. And it's scary sometimes. It can feel daunting at times just to come in through the doors of a church. God, I don't know what's next. It's not easy. It's not always fun. And I am going to fail somewhere along this journey. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Peter spent three years with God, the creator in the flesh. And when it came time to stand boldly for Christ, he denied him three times. If you think you're the only one that's going to drop the ball, you haven't read the Bible. And it's my opinion. I could be wrong on this. Typically, I'm not. It's my opinion. (laughs) Just ask my wife. Digging it, digging. Uh, It's my opinion that if today, if the apostles the 12 apostles, these great men, if they were to come back to life and we were to meet them, people would leave the church. If the apostle Peter walked into this room and got up on this stage, there's people in this room right now or watching online that would leave the church. Uh Uh-uh. He's saying things I don't agree with. He's a little rough around the edges. He was a fisherman. I'm sure he struggled with his language and he struggled with temptation and he struggled with lust And he struggled with these these dirty words in the Christian faith. God still loved him. He denied Christ. You can't mess up any bigger than Peter did. He looked Jesus in the eyeballs and denied him. Have you ever looked Christ in the eyes and denied him? No, you haven't. Peter did. Hear me on this. Someone needs to know this. God does not want you to be a super Christian. God does not want you to act holy. God wants you to be holy. And the only way to be holy is go through this process from point A to point B, one step at a time, one step at a time. This is the only way. And I hope this sets somebody free this morning to know that God does not want you to go, I come to church for the first time and two weeks later, I'm somewhere over here. No, no, right? But that's what's been presented in the church. That's what's been presented. God doesn't want this. No. God says no. You know what God wants? He wants this. And then he wants this. And then he wants this. At no point in time does God want this. Never. He wants one step at a time. And I hope this sets somebody free this morning to know that you live in a fallen world. We all do. 
And every single believer that has ever or will ever live will have to deal with the problem of sin. I want you right now in your head to think of the best Christian you've ever seen in your life. Please don't think of me. I want you to think of the best Christian, the most godly person, filthy rags before the Lord. What? Filthy rags before the Lord. And so am I. And so are you. Here's the kicker of the whole thing. Guess what? You can't change it. Some of us have been trying to. That's called trying to earn it. Trying to be good enough for God. It's all about the blood. If I'm covered in the blood of Christ, I am clothed in righteousness because of him. I'm still a filthy rag, but God covers me in his blood and says, I now call you righteous. Do you see what I'm saying? That's the good news of the gospel. We've got a lot of people that are trying to get, trying to clean off the rag. You don't need clean, you need covered. You need covered. And one day, I can just feel right now there's somebody in here going, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like the way this sounds. That's what scripture says. One day, Jesus is coming back to put an end to the mess, to all the stuff we struggle with once and for all. But until he does, friends, you are going to fail. You're going to sin. You're going to mess up. You're going to let people down, but guess what? God still knows your name. God still loves you. God still chose you. God still says you are my son and my daughter who's been adopted into the kingdom, and it's okay to be here. This is okay to be right here. And this is why so many people want nothing to do with church because people within the church make people feel like it's not okay to be here. It's not okay to be A, B, or C. Fix that. Actually, you need to work harder. And if you work hard enough, if you live right enough, if you don't cuss, you too one day can be over here just like me. Now, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I did it. And this lie, my friends, has permeated the church for generations. Christians walk around like they were born here. And that what God wants for you is to quit acting like an A, B, or C, dress better, act nicer, clean out your potty mouth, and get to Z as quick as you can. And what does that say to someone who gave everything they had just to get up this morning and walk through the doors of a church? What does it say? It says, I don't belong here. I can never be good enough. Not only can I not be good enough for God, but I can't be good enough for his church. So why even try? Like, trust me, I know I'm a wreck. I know I'm a mess. I know I've let my family down. I know I struggle with addiction. I know I struggle with these things. I get it. I'm well aware of my failures and flaws. And if I'm being honest, it just kind of seems like churches for people who are kind of over here. Has anybody ever experienced that? I have. My friends, this couldn't be further from the truth. Church is a place for broken people. It is a, it is. And if you didn't think you were broken, I have really unfortunate news for you. Every person, if you're breathing, raise your hand right now. I'm worried about a couple of y'all. I'm worried. Where's our medical team? If you're breathing, if you're breathing in this room right now, you're broken. During that conversation I was having with my friend the other day, he said something else so simple yet so profound. He said, we have no idea what it took for somebody to walk through the doors of a church this morning. It could have taken every ounce of strength they had just to sit in one of these seats. Like they're they're like back here, like here. Or maybe on another whiteboard, over here. And not only that, not only are they just starting out, but maybe they're grieving or walking through a divorce or dealing with addiction or stuck in violence, maybe even contemplating taking their own lives. There are people in this room and watching online right now that are fighting battles we know nothing about. And the church for years upon years upon years has said, I know you're dealing with stuff, but fix it. God doesn't want this. No, 
God wants your QR and S. That's what God wants. That's what God requires of you every day. I'm here to tell somebody this morning, the only thing that God wants from you is to get from here to here to here to here to here. And that's what we're trying to cultivate and create here at Summit Church. That, that is more important to us than a lot of things. I don't know what this looks like for you. Like, I don't know what it's going to take for you to get from G to H. I do not know. Maybe it's, maybe it's spending five more minutes in Scripture every day. Maybe it's coming to church two weeks in a row, praise the Lord. Maybe it's praying with your wife and your kids before they go to bed or before a meal. Maybe it's something as big as going on the mission field, going to Bible college. Either way, the principle of the process is the same. A to B, not A to Z. That is not what God wants from you. And we can get so caught up in being here and trying to get over here that we miss what God wants to do right here. Can you guys still hear me? I feel like my microphone just went off. Hello? And if you go from A to Z, what, do you, what, what could God have wanted to do in the middle? What did you miss in the middle? There have been many believers that have tried to skip from A to Z, and in doing so, they missed the character development that was supposed to happen right here. All God wants for you, I hope you're getting this, all God wants for every person in this room is to go one step ahead. That's it. Don't worry about where I am. Don't worry about where your friends are or where other people think you should be. Forget about all that. It's noise. None of it matters. What matters is what God wants, and he wants you to go from A to B, not A to Z. And that should set somebody free this morning. We are all at different places. Everybody. Some of us in here are maybe right here. Some of us, maybe we're down here doing a, doing a little bit longer, reading a little bit more. Some of us are right here. Like, like some of us are young. Some of us are old. Um, that was good, wasn't it, Ron? That was good. Some of us in this room have lived really hard lives. And you haven't told anybody about it. And you may still be struggling with it. Jim and Faith's group. There, there may be some things that you need to get off your chest, some things that are just holding you back from what God wants to do next. You have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. Maybe you're back here. Maybe, maybe you've walked through some seriously traumatic seasons or are just coming out of one. And there's other people in this room that just haven't. Like you just lived a, a different life, an easier life for one reason or another. Some of us in here have been at this for years and others are just getting started this morning. But the response for each one of us, regardless of where you are in your walk, is the same. Man, I hope you're getting this. One step forward. A little bit better this week than you were the last. Maybe you're at a C, trying to get to a D. Maybe you're at an M, trying to get to an N. Hear me on this. If you're trying to get to that next letter, if, you're, if you've got your eyes on Jesus, and you may be right here, and you say, Lord, I want to be at B. I keep messing things up. I keep failing. I'm not seeing a lot of growth in myself. If you are trying to get from A to B, my friends, you are in the will of God. The M's are no better than the B's. The Z's are no better than the T's. This is what sanctification means. It's a process, not a formula. And it's a journey that we're all commanded to take. And guys, I mess this up every single day. Every single day. But God still calls me a son. Man, what? It, that's the grace of God. You can't fathom it. You can't make sense of it. He gives me grace and mercy, and he expresses his love to me by coming beside me wherever, even if I've taken a few steps back. He comes beside me. He picks me up. He says, that's okay. Get back up and go. Put your boots back on and keep walking. 
walking to the place that I am going to show you. Don't stop now. You're almost to C. It doesn't feel like it, but you're almost to D now. Don't stop now. You're working on E. That is sanctification. And, and, and this set me free, what I'm about to tell you right now. God is not looking down on you with his arms crossed saying, I knew you were going to mess this up. I thought I grew up thinking that. God is standing right beside you and he's saying, you belong to me and I will never leave you. I will never forsake you regardless of how much of a hot mess you may be. I paid a price for you. I'm going to tell you a secret. I've got a few more minutes here. You guys want to hear a secret? This is going to shock some of you. This is an ancient, untold mystery that the world is hearing for the first time right here at Summit Church. You ready for this? You stressed out yet? I said this ought to be good. This is good. Here it is. Ancient, untold mystery. This right here, Z, that place that we all want to get, we think other people are, it doesn't exist. doesn't exist what do i mean by that sin took z away in the garden life was perfect in the garden sin entered into the world it doesn't exist in fact sin actually i didn't even see this eraser boy i could have used this earlier Sin actually took like the last half of the alphabet. We spend so much time trying to get to Z, like we want the fruition of the call. Like you remember when God told Abraham, this is what you're going to have eventually. I'm not going to tell you how to get there. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen when you get there. Just keep on walking. We spend so much time trying to get over here because we want the blessing and the purpose. But guess what? It doesn't exist. Why? Because of sin. If you sin ever in this life, even one time, you'll never make it to Z. People will act like it. It's not real. In reality, my friends, blowing somebody's mind right now, the best we can hope for is somewhere over here. Something like QRNS, M even, N. If you live long enough like Ron, you might be able to make it to O. Why? 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 Let me explain. This right here, this is heaven, my friends. This is heaven. You can't get there here. You, you cannot be perfect here. You will not be perfect here. There is nobody alive on planet earth that is worthy of heaven. Scripture says there is what? None among you righteous. No, not one. Not one. So wherever you are this morning, I want to release somebody in this building or watching online. Quit focusing on everybody else's alphabet. Quit listening to who people think you should be or where they think you should be or what they're doing on their walk with the Lord. It's okay to look up to people. But, but my friends, as soon as you start coming to church and getting involved, you will start getting these. Whose experiences? You come to church and all of a sudden people start telling you how to live your life. What? Like, I start going to church and cleaning my life up, and now you're going to tell me how to live? Where were you before? Prayer team, would you guys come up here? Just line the front. I hope this is abundantly clear. I have one message this morning, one objective, and that is that we would all know that we are called to get from one level to the next. That's it. One step forward. God is calling everybody in here, just like Abraham. He's saying, get up and go. Don't stay where you are, but don't focus on Z. I'm calling you to B. I'm calling you to C. I'm calling you to D. So so here's the good news. We can relax. This should allow us to chill for a second. Loosen up. Give yourself a break. Don't try to fix everything at once. You can't do it. I've tried. Oh, I've tried. My wife can attest I haven't figured it out. Paul said this. What did Paul say? He said, I'm writing to you not as if I've made it. Lord knows I haven't. Eventually, I got to a point where I realized 
I'm trying to be perfect because I thought that was ministry was supposed to be. That's what I'd seen modeled before me. Like the pulpit means perfection. And I gave it an honest shot. I tried to get to Z, but the Lord showed me the reality that I can improve in some areas. And he wants me to be better, but I'll never be perfect. Nobody is, and that's okay. And it released me from feeling like I was failing all the time. Like being real or being human and messing stuff up and getting upset and thinking things I shouldn't. And saying things I shouldn't means that I failed and I have to start back here. That's a lie, my friends. God wrote the beginning from the end. Did you know that? Did you know that God wrote your days? God numbered your days. He wrote every word of your life, every sentence before you ever took a breath. God already knows what you're walking through. Here you are. Here you are inside of a church with the opportunity to go from A to B and a safe place to do it. That is the principle of the process. So what's the next step between you and the Lord? What, what is it? I, I don't know. I know what it is for me. I don't know what that is for you. But I want to seek the Lord together for just a couple minutes. Let's all stand up in the house. And I felt this so strongly when I was putting this message together that not for everybody, but for somebody in this room, I felt the Spirit of God, I can feel him right now. For somebody in this room, the next step to go from wherever you are right now to the next place that God is calling you is going to require you to come down front and have one of these people pray for you. It's something you've been thinking about. It's something you've been feeling, but for some reason you haven't taken the step. I know what that feels like. I was there for a long time. I really believe there's somebody in this room, maybe more than one person, that if you'll be obedient and come down front and have one of our prayer team lay hands on you and pray for you, something will break off of you. Something will break. It's your job to be obedient in this. So we're gonna play Spotify. You can play it whenever. I'm gonna say a prayer. We're gonna end service. But there's somebody in here, maybe more than one person, that needs to come down here and have somebody lay hands on you and pray for you. Father, we just thank you for the word that's gone forth this morning. We thank you that you do not call us from A to Z. You call us from A to B. You're with us along the way. And so I just pray right now, Lord, if there's anybody in this room and you're prompting them, come forward, come forward, take a step of faith, take a public step of faith, and something will break off of them. We just pray that into the kingdom right now, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for everybody in this room right now. In Jesus' name.